In molecules and in ionic compounds, the atoms are held together with bonds. Bonds can be classified one of three types, either polar covalent, nonpolar covalent, or ionic. We have talked a little bit about these different types of bonds. We've talked about how an ionic bond is simply an attraction between a positively charged cation and a negatively charged anion. We've also talked about how covalent bonds are simply the sharing of electrons between two atoms, although we have not used the terms polar or nonpolar yet. The classification of a bond, so whether a bond is polar or nonpolar covalent or ionic, depends on the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms that are bonded together. So the change in electronegativity or the difference in electronegativity is what we use to classify the bond. In order for us to classify a bond, we need to know the electronegativity values for each atom in the bond. Let's look at this molecule as our first example. So in this molecule, we only have one bond, and that's the chlorine-chlorine bond. And if we wanted to calculate the difference in electronegativity for the chlorine-chlorine bond, we would need to look up the electronegativity values for the chlorine atoms in this molecule. The electronegativity values are usually published on a special periodic table. In this particular periodic table, I have just written the electronegativity values onto a few elements. You can uh, find a table of electronegativity values in your textbook or they're all over the internet. And we can see that chlorine has an electronegativity value of 3.0. So I'm going to write that value in underneath each one of these atoms. Chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.0. The difference in electronegativity between the two chlorine atoms just comes simply from subtracting one from the other. And obviously, which I've talked about in the last video, when you have two identical atoms in a bond, the difference in electronegativity between those two atoms will always be zero. So this was maybe a little bit unnecessary, but just trying to take it really slow. When the difference in electronegativity between two atoms is zero, as we talked about in a previous video, that simply means that the electrons in that bond are being shared perfectly equally between those two atoms. And that type of bond we call a nonpolar covalent bond. A nonpolar covalent bond is an equal sharing of the electrons in a covalent bond. The electronegativity values that correspond to a covalent bond doesn't have to be zero, but it has to be somewhere less than 0.5. Now, chemists um, all across the board don't necessarily agree on this number, so you might see other resources that have a slightly different number here. Just be on the lookout for that. Um, but in you know this is a pretty good benchmark. So if the, the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms is less than 0.5, the atoms are pretty evenly sharing those electrons. And we classify that type of covalent bond as being nonpolar. Let's take a look at our next example here. So here we have fluorine and nitrogen. Let's go back to that periodic table and find those electronegativity values. Fluorine right here has an electronegativity of 4.0 and nitrogen is 3.0. So again, we're going to write those numbers in for nitrogen 3.0 and for fluorine 4.0. And because this molecule has three bonds, all three of them are nitrogen fluorine bonds, we only need to do one delta En calculation. The difference in electronegativity between the any, any fluorine and the nitrogen is going to be four minus three. You might be asking yourself, how do you know which number goes first when we're doing this? We're really just looking at the difference. So you can put the larger number first, put the smaller number second and get the, the absolute value of the difference. So this is a covalent bond. There are electrons being shared, but it is not qualifying as a nonpolar covalent bond because the difference in electronegativity is one, which is greater than 0.5. So this type of bond we call a polar covalent bond. And a polar covalent bond is just simply an unequal sharing of electrons between the two atoms. And if you watched my previous video, this is a situation where we have a big kid a big strong person playing tug of war with a little tiny kid. A polar covalent bond is defined as one that has electronegativity difference somewhere between 0.5 and 2.0.
So somewhere in that ballpark. And again, this number is not necessarily agreed upon by all chemists, so make sure that you're double checking your resources um, and, and seeing what whatever resource you're using, what the definition is for polar covalent. Now, within a molecule, if there are different types of bonds, so this molecule has a hydrogen-carbon bond and this uh, is a carbon-nitrogen bond, if there are two different types of bonds in a molecule, it is possible for both of them to be polar or for both of them to be nonpolar or for one of each. So let's do the calculation on this molecule as well. We already know that nitrogen is 3.0 because we've already looked that up. So let's look up hydrogen and carbon. Carbon right here is a 2.5 and hydrogen is a 2.1. Hydrogen is 2.1 and carbon is 2.5. So the difference in electronegativity for the hydrogen carbon bond, that is going to be 0 0.4. That's coming from 2.5 minus 2.1. And the difference in electronegativity for the carbon nitrogen bond is 0.5. That's a difference of 3.0 and 2.5. Notice that this is a carbon nitrogen triple bond. The difference in electronegativity doesn't, um, it doesn't matter if the bond is a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond. It's just based solely on the values of the atoms. So in this particular molecule, we have two different types of bonds. We have a nonpolar bond between the carbon and the hydrogen and then we also have a polar bond just barely but that's a polar covalent bond in between the carbon and the nitrogen and that is definitely not unusual now what about if the difference in electronegativity is greater than 2 because our definitions here go from 0 to 0.5 and then from 0.5 to 2.0 so if the difference in electronegativity is greater than 2 then we have an ionic bond When we have an ionic compound, we've talked about the ionic compounds before, this comes from total transfer of electrons from one atom to another. So let's go back to our periodic table one more time to find sodium. The uh, electronegativity of sodium is 0.9. And we've already looked up the electronegativity for chlorine, it's 3.0. So for this particular compound, the difference in electronegativity is 2.1. When the electronegativity difference is this large, when one of the atoms has such a tremendously strong desire for the electrons compared to the other, that's when we see a straight transfer of electrons from one substance to another. And we classify that particular type of bond as ionic. So let's just go ahead and add some classifications. There's our ionic bond. This was a polar. All of these were polar bonds. And this was our non polar bond.